All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread Good morning everybody. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Thanks for being with us. We read the Bible. We discuss it. Had a couple days off this week, but we're back. 2 Samuel chapter 18, the end of chapter 18, and the news of Absalom's death comes to David. Absalom dies at the hand of Joab, and now the word is going to be sent to David. We pick this up in verse 19 of 2 Samuel chapter 18. Then then Ahimaaz... The son of Zadok said, Let me run and carry the news to the king. The Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemies. And Joab said to him, You are not to carry news today. You may carry news another day, but today you shall carry no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed before Joab and ran. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, Come what may, let me also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, Why will you run, my son, seeing that you will have no reward for the news? Come what may, he said, I will run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain and outran the Cushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and when he lifted up his eyes and looked, he saw a man running alone. The watchman called out and told the king, and the king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. And he drew nearer and nearer, and the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called to the gate and said, See, another man running alone. The king said, He also brings news. The watchman said, I think the running of the first is like that running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. Then Ahimaaz cried out to the king, All is well. And he bowed before the king with his face to the earth and said, Blessed be the Lord your God who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, It is well with the young man Absalom. And Ahimez answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, your servant, I saw a great commotion, but I do not know what it was. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. And behold, the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good news for my lord the king, for the Lord has delivered you this day from the hand of all who rose up against you. And the king said to the Cushite, It is well the young man with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you for evil be like that young man. And the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This is a fitting conclusion to the story of Absalom's rebellion. It's a a final conclusion to the story that began with a young man wanting to take his father's kingdom. Absalom was the man who came into the kingdom or came into the city. He conspired against his father. He stirred up uh, opposition to his father, supporters, and he went into the city. And when he went into the city, he took the throne from his father. David was forced to leave. Absalom hated his father so much that he was willing to kill his father in order to gain the power of the throne. He sent men after David. They went to battle. David's men go to battle, Absalom in battle, but the Lord delivers David from the hand of his enemies because David is the rightful king. David is the Lord's anointed. David is the man the Lord wants on the throne. He is what is best for Israel. He is the will of God. His reign is the will of God. And so Absalom is killed in this battle. Joab runs him through in a fitting conclusion to his life. It is what he should have received in a just society for rebelling and for treason, rebelling against the king. But that doesn't make David's heart any harder toward him, or maybe a better way to put it is it doesn't make the news any easier for David to take. Uh, This is David's son. His son has grieved him by rebelling against him. His son has forced him to go on a run, but nevertheless, he is his son. Absalom is David's blood. 
David loves him. He held him as a baby. He was there with him. He played with him as a young boy. He trained him up in the ways in which he should go. Absalom departed from that way. But nevertheless, David was his father who had great love for his sons, and he grieves. And it's interesting that at the conclusion of the story, instead of celebrating the fact that he has received the kingdom back, David is weeping and grieving and crying out, O Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son, and saying, I would have rather died than you. It's as if David is saying in this moment, I would have given you the kingdom to keep you from dying. I would have put myself in your place if I could have. Now, David understands and knows beyond a question that this is exactly what Absalom deserves as the one who has rebelled against the king. It's the end that was coming to him all along. But even still, David's heart is broken for his son, I think it's just a remarkable statement on a father's love. I think it is a remarkable statement on the uh, on the connection between a father and his son. I think it's a, a, a remarkable statement on how a son is always considered to be a son of the father regardless of what has happened. Sons can't go that far away from the love of their father. I think it's also a beautiful picture, uh, a human picture of how God's great love for us, that while we have strayed and wandered away and sinned against him, he would rather die himself. And so he sent forth his son, the second person of the Trinity, took upon himself flesh and died in our place. Because our Father in heaven wants to live in relationship with us. We have sinned against him. We have turned against him. We have conspired against him. We have rebelled against him. And yet he still gave himself his own son for our sake, so that we can live in relationship with him. So you see in this dynamic, just the the raw human nature and the raw human emotion of death and grief, human nature and the love between father and son. But you also see in this picture a, a, a beautiful demonstration of God's divine love for his people and how God is one who pursues his people and seeks to bring reconciliation. David didn't want Absalom killed. In fact, he'd given specific instructions not to kill Absalom. David wanted to try to work it out. He wanted to defeat Absalom's army, but he wanted to bring Absalom back. His greatest desire was reconciliation with Absalom. That was not to be the case, and it grieved his heart. In a just society, he got what he deserved, Absalom did. But in the eyes of his father... He was never too far gone from the attempts of reconciliation. You're never too gone from God for his reconciliation and reconciliatory love with you. And I think that's an important point. We are to emulate that love. We are to see that human nature. And we're to recognize that there is uh, wonderful grace, forgiveness, and the opportunity to be reconciled to God in Christ. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Carry me close to your heart